Let's imagine you have a chatbot and you would like a specific user to authenticate so that you can run specific actions for that user. That means things like password changes, email address changes, account changes, creating orders, refunding orders. All of that is very sensitive and if not done properly, you can risk account issues and this is something that you definitely don't want um, within your business. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use VoiceFlow in combination with Mac.com to create a bot integration that can authenticate a user nevertheless where it is hosted. Via either it's in your CRM, it can be on a WordPress website and can be in a completely custom database. This bot basically allows you to authenticate a user, make sure this user is actually the real user so that you can run specific actions for the user within your chatbot. Like I mentioned, we use two tools for that. The first one is voice flow and the second one is make.com so make sure you have an account for those you will of course also get access to all of our templates that means the voice flow template and the make.com template within our hub under hub.indigraticus.com you'll find the link within the description down below and it's of course for free like all the stuff we did there. before i'm going to dive into it i'm going to show you an example so you better understand what the whole thing is about first of all i'm going to show you how it works so you will see it on our screen now that I'm just running that specific chatbot and it basically asks us welcome, how can I help you? So what we want to do now in that case, let's say we want to, um, let's say change password. So we want to change our user password. So it runs through classifier. It basically asks now the user to authenticate. To continue, we must verify that you are you. Please enter your email. So all I did is I used now a temporary email address to see if we actually get the data. And we head back into the flow. I I add the email address and it just says thank you, we just send you an email containing a verification token for your account. Perfect. So now if we head in here, you can see that it shows a verification token. We go to it, we can copy this specific token which is inside of the email address and we paste it back into the form. Now our chatbot checks if it's okay and it basically fetches the user details from a database that we kind of fake here and you can see it says Jan is more, so it basically worked. All we did is we basically verified if the email actually is by the user that he pretends to be by sending it a verification token so he can use it to kind of authenticate within the chatbot. That gives you the leverage to actually run these specific user information queries on your database and do specific actions within it. If you don't want to dive into the details and you want to figure it out yourself, you can just download the templates as mentioned on the hub.indigraticus.com. Otherwise, just follow me along back on the screen because we're going through it step by step. The whole thing basically consists of two things, which is our home tab that basically contains the classifier and a specific component, which is called user verification. So that is our starting point. Everything we do is we basically give back a text message saying, welcome, how can I help you? and then capturing the user's last utterance, so the basically the reply. We save that to a variable, we send it to our classifier that you also find within our hub. So you can simply paste in the prompt here and the system prompt um, from here. So we set it to manage account, that is basically all it can do for now, but you can customize it depending on your needs. So if you want to have a different actions, let's say you have a specific one for change password, like we did before, you can add that specific one here and define it something like that. That would basically does do the same thing. It sends it to your specific action that uh, is basically classified uh, yeah, within these specific conditions. So now it's set to manage account. If you want to have the, the change password, you could basically add another condition with a variable and check against that. Then the first main part starts with is um, check if the user is verified. So what we did is we basically created a variable that says user verified, and that basically contains uh, true or false or yes or no and yeah it contains yes or no in this case so if it is set to yes then we know the user is already verified and we can just do the specific action that is what's missing here as you can see so this is something you can implement wherever you need it so let's say you want to reset the password and you verify the user you can then run uh, your api request to wherever you want to reset the password if it is not verified which is the case if the user just opened the chatbot we are going to send them to the user verification component and this is where the magic starts. So the first thing we do is we, of course, like you've seen it earlier, we ask it to enter your email address. That's what we do here. We assign it to a variable called user underscore email. And then we are generating a token. So this is the main part where we are literally just executing some JavaScript that basically generates a random token of the length of eight characters. And it can be a lowercase, uppercase characters. It can be numbers. So all of those. And then once that is done and it was successful, we are going to send 
a specific request to a make.com scenario. So we've set up some security parameters. Those are basically defined within the scenario just to make sure no one else who knows the webhook can use it. And we are sending over as well the user email as well as the user token that we created within the JavaScript. So you can see here, unique user token is the variable that we defined earlier and which we assigned that specific dynamically generated value to. What this specific scenario does is what I can show you here. So it's very simple, it's literally just two steps. You have the webhook, that was the thing that you have seen within the URL of the box, so this specific part here. Of course, right now it's a temporary one, so you need to adjust that to yours. And then you can basically send data to it, and we are doing here a request validation, which basically checks that specific security key we set, and we make sure it's the one that we actually set within the parameter as well. When all of that was okay, then we use the Gmail integration to the specific user email address that we also sent over within that request, as you can see here, along with a verify token. So we send it over, we say, please verify your email, and we send the token along inside of the body. Obviously, now it's a very simple plain text, but you can customize it to use HTML or whatever you'd like inside of that content field. So you can be definitely creative and use your own layouts. And that's literally it. So all that does is it basically sends an email from a specific request to that user that requested it. So he basically gets the token within on their email and then use that token back in the VoiceFlow chatbot to verify themselves. And the verification happens within these two steps. So the capture token is basically a specific field that we use in that case again last utterance because it's literally the only input field we are checking for. So he basically sets the token then we are validating it, so we check if the last utterance, so the last thing the user typed in, is equivalent to that specific token that we generated from the JavaScript step. And if they both match, which is only the case if that user has access to the email address, then we are going to fetch the or do the specific action from the database. So in that case, we basically run a database connection uh, that is just faked, so I literally just set a specific username variable to output some specific username, but what you would do is you would use an API request, you fetch the stuff from your database, and you send it back over. Another step that I just noticed we haven't done here, but which is something you can definitely do, is you can actually set the user to verified, so that even for more requests afterward, he, is, he doesn't need to authenticate all the time again. To do that, I would say we just add a, a block here, and we can set um, the user verification. So you will also have that once you download the template, obviously. And now we apply it to... Oh, I started again. Oh, it's running. Yeah, sorry, my mistake. Let's just head back over. User verification, apply to a specific variable. We apply to user verified, and we set the value to yes, which basically means that when this specific action was okay, and we basically fetched the user already, we can also set it to, uh, to true. So that basically means it's authenticated and now it doesn't check all the time again when you send it back to the home, which is um, what we do here. So everything we do is we basically just take the username that we set from the database connection. I set it here to username via JavaScript. And then we are going back to uh, the intent general classifier, which is what you will find under start here. So basically it goes back to the main last utterance check. So whatever the user types in again will run again through the classifier and then does all the other actions. So that's basically it. So in the end, it's a very simple process. I know exactly it's a bit complex to explain, but the best is if you literally just download the template, you install it and you try it for yourself so you can get a better feeling of it, what exactly it does. There's one thing that I would like to mention in regards to security. So in case anywhere within the bot that you are going to create, you have to adjust or reset the email address. Make sure to always authenticate the user. Let's for example assume you don't authenticate the user again. A user can basically change the email address and counts as validated because you set, it, set the user validated variable to yes. So that is the only tricky part you need to be careful when creating this chatbot. And apart from that, it's a pretty straightforward process. And that's it. I hope for now this whole setup helps you a little bit to build some more specific chatbots just to help your users to create more specific scenarios for them. And if you have any specific questions regarding this bot or you don't understand anything from the make.com scenario or whatever, I'm always happy if you drop me a message down in the comments and I'll be happy, of course, to help. That's it for now. Until next time, take care.